Hello and welcome to Issues and Debates Lesson 1, Gender. In this session we're going to talk about concepts such as universality and bias. We're going to look at gender bias, androcentrism, alpha and beta, and some of the evaluations of how we deal with it and the consequences it can have. This is a relatively short lecture and you'll be expected to read the guide notes very carefully. So some key definitions, universality and gender bias. Universality really refers to those characteristics of human beings that we can generalize. So one might be short-term memory capacity. However, if we assume universality, bias can actually threaten the findings. So imagine this, short-term memory capacity is thought to be seven plus or minus two items, chunks, whatever you want to go with. Certainly that's true amongst the genders. However, that may not be true amongst cultures. There have been cultures discovered, for example, that have no concept of um, number or very little uh, or poorly developed concept of number. How would their short-term memory work? Uh, any culture in which discrete items are not needed to be remembered because they're, for example, tribal or whatever. Um, gender bias, then, is the tendency to treat one gender differently from another in research. A theory or research may not represent the experience of males or females. So, some types of gender bias. There's alpha and beta. Alpha refers to exaggerating the differences, beta minimizing. So alpha is often used to undervalue one uh, sex or gender, not always deliberately, but sometimes deliberately. So females were considered uh, to be inferior in the 30s and 40s, and serious scientific research tried to back that up. Uh, beta bias Differences are ignored or minimized when perhaps they shouldn't be. Androcentrism. So this is a specific form of gender bias that stems from potentially having a male view, a male worldview, in which only males matter or males matter more. Studies tend to be carried out only on males and therefore the results are generalized to females as a sort of afterthought. The opposite of androcentrism, which historically has not been a problem, is estrocentrism or gynocentrism. This is, I suspect, going to become a bigger issue. If you think 70% of PhDs in psychology were awarded to men in 2008, and now only 30% of men achieve a PhD in psychology, that means the field is dominated by women, and it has been for some time. Essentially, even cognitive psychology, which is the most male-dominated field within the subject, 55% of those in the field are female. So psychology is a female-dominated subject. It is wholly unrepresentative. And therefore, it's likely that the consequences are going to be some form of either alpha or beta gender bias. Not necessarily because researchers will carry out research on a single gender, perhaps as they did in the 50s and 60s, but more so because the types of fields that women are specialising in may be those that females are particularly interested in, uh, but that are not necessarily that interesting from a male perspective. Ways that gender bias can occur. Selection of participants. If you take a random selection, you can get a disproportionate number of males or females in a study. Ideally, some form of stratified sampling should be used where the exact target population uh, demographic makeup is represented in your sample. Information should be provided in a non-biased way, so written, so that there are no differentiates uh, for gender. We should always be aware of gender stereotype. 